Kuani Wilderness Lodge is situated on Wellesley Lake, located 200 air miles northwest of Whitehorse in Canada's Yukon Territory, and it's accessible only by float plane. Lake Trout, Northern Pike, and Lake Whitefish are abundant in both size and numbers due to Kluani's catch and release policy and the use of barbless hooks. Kluani Wilderness Lake can accommodate 18 guests at one time and offers all the comforts of home. The main lodge consists of a large dining room, a bar, lounge, kitchen and a store. It's early June, about one week after ice off, and the big pike are moving into the bays to warm up and feed. Topwater pike on Wellesley Lake, that's today as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Pike fishing here at Wellesley Lake. Oh, nice fish. Oh, he's been <laughs> snacked on a lot too, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. Look, Look at that. His fins on. getting chipped off and everything else. Wow, all top water action today. Wellesley, Wellesley Lake here up at Kulani Wilderness Lodge. Should be a really exciting day. We're trying to get him on top. I mean, we're hoping the sun comes out a bit. Yeah. We're using the big deer hair poppers, and actually, you you had a couple of hits, and then finally this big guy came oh, up. Oh, and he just it. charged it. <laughs> what a fish. We actually didn't get it on film, but he tail walked over there. What a great thing. Now, what we want to go through first is when you're pike fishing, we're going to go through the essential tools you need to pike fish. First, the critical tool, the spreaders. When you got a big guy like this, you got to watch when you get in there because he'll jump at you. He'll, you know, he starts looking. When his gills flare, he's coming at you. So, first of all, you got to spread them, hold them open, let the other guy get the fly out, and then off he goes. <laughs> you know, a big fish like that, we love to hold up. But a lot of times, I don't like to grab them by the gill, yeah. mainly because if your hand ever slides up through their mouth, you're cooked. You're going to get all just chewed up. The other thing well, is, I don't think it's really good for the fish either. No, it can be hard on them. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely hard on them. Maybe we'll get one that we can hold up, one that doesn't look like it's too aggressive. But that yeah. guy, he had some bite marks out of the back. <laughs> well, yeah, but you see the size of the fish. I mean, they've caught them up to like the 60 inch mark, which is, that's yeah. 35 pounds. That's just huge. Yeah. It's absolutely huge. So we're hoping for the sun. The well, sun comes out, we should have been for a great day of pike fishing. You betcha. So stay tuned. Should be a good show. There's every kind of size fish, too, of pike. And I've got <laughs> the baby. <laughs> Do you ever? Holy cow. But you know what's cool is the sun's come out now. It's not cool, it's actually nice and warm. It's finally warming up and I think that's going to pull, put them on right now. Hopefully. That's it's all it needs usually, you know. They're in, they're in like two, three feet of water. That's it. The pike are all sitting in this bay and this whole bay, the, probably the deepest point is six feet. Yeah. And they're sitting in one and two feet of water. So you just go through, throw a popper on and we'll show you a, little, a popper later on when we tie one on the bench. And we'll have to see what color we're going to tie, which one's working the best. Well, you know, we were out the other day and Big Red was getting us the big ones. And Big Black was attracting was all these attracting little the ghost guys. fish. But here, I was going through that earlier. The essential tools, the spreaders again, and the pliers. Make sure you got these two. For sure, you put the spreaders in first, open them up. Unhook the barbless hook, just like that. And, oh, there you go. And teamwork. Teamwork, teamwork well. was really good because last time I tried it, I was by myself. You also notice that we have our spreaders <laughs> tethered to the boat. <laughs> We've Why gone through a few. Because <laughs> there's yeah, a couple lying around out here <laughs> in, the, that's exactly in the bay. Make sure you take care of them. Well, I know there's bigger ones out here. Yeah. We've had a few hits, so hopefully I'm going to get into one. Or just drifting too. We're not anchoring up. We're finding we're having our best luck by drifting. So I think what we're going to do is just head back up over there yeah. and drift through and again. Through we cover again. more ground that way. 
Yeah, and you do. I mean, the pike are all through here, so it's just a matter of them getting cranked up, turned on a bit, and yeah. get them action. And they're we, not moving a lot, so we want to yeah. move to them rather than have them move to us. Exactly, and you can also throw out the, like we're throwing these big dry poppers, because, I mean, the top water action is the best to see. But if you're going to run a little lure through or some of the wet flies right now, you're going to get a pike of cast probably. Because yeah. I know some other guys were out here doing that, and they were just, just paying them, so. Have a fun. What an incredible but, lake this is. Yeah. Okay, let's make the move. Yeah. Let's make a move. Again, totally visual. Coming up right behind the hook. That is just the best seeing those kind of takes. Not a, not a big fish again, but the big, uh, you know, it's fairly early. It really hasn't warmed up a whole bunch. There we go, and off he goes. One other important thing that we have to discuss here is the setup. Let's go through the setup here. Well, we have big black, <laughs> and it works good in big red or big yellow, whatever they are. All they are, simple tail on them, any kind of uh, monster hair, anything on the back, and just big deer hair fly that we're going to tie in the bench. The about. hook is really important too. Big, big hooks. Two watts, four out hooks, so you can get the nice hook up. Yeah. You want to make sure the hook's big. Get into your pike leader. You go and buy these pike leaders, and they come in, uh, Climax makes a real nice pike leader. Comes with a wire. They're actually a wire leader. Yeah. Very important. Comes on some real heavy, like 40 pound mono that you tie to your fly line. And then we're just using dry line. Yep. Because we're using poppers around the top. And even if you're going underneath subsurface, you're still going to be using a dry line because, again, you're in two, three feet of water. And eight weight rods. Yeah. You got to have a stiff rod because some of these fish are going to range up in the, you know, 20 to 30 pounds if you're yeah. lucky to get the big guys moving through. So, again, big reels, lots of backing, eight weight rods, probably perfect setup. Yeah. Nail knot. You want to use a nail knot in order to get this leader onto your fly line without losing. A whole bunch of uh, that's flies. it because then you've got the little crimp connector they give you little metal crimp connectors and if you keep wasting them there's only three to a bag yeah. so if you keep wasting the crimp connectors you're not going to have any left to tie any more flies on so right. you're better off changing your leader all the time tie the nail knots or practice your nail knots wow just the explosive take. Not huge. Maybe getting to be a little bit there. Nothing like the first one though. The first one we had was, he was nice. He was kind of like the uh, the old war veteran though. He'd been snacked on a few times. <laughs> this guy here too, he's got some war marks as well. But he's not bad size. Good size pike. Right on. Oh, that's a nice pike. Yeah. Well, you know, this the whole thing here at this Kluani Wilderness Resort, Wellesley Lake up in the Yukon and what a great place to come not only to get awesome pike fishing like we've got here which and of course it's going to depend on the time of year you come it open up beginning of June right through the end of August and I hear that uh, in September fishing can be quite good as well but it's usually June through August you get lake trout that can reach up to 50 pounds get make 20 25 pounds on the fly you get the huge lake white fish, you pick up a coronamid. Oh, look at this guy following me. Look at him. Some of the best coronamid fishing. Oh. oh, he turned away. That you're ever gonna have here on five pound lake white five fish. Pound, yep. Actually, the world record lake white fish are coming right out of this lake here. Well, we're gonna catch some today. Yeah. And that's the other neat thing Later about on. this whole thing here is you actually come here for six days. You spend six days fishing. You fly into Whitehorse, you end up getting on an otter, a single engine otter. They pop you over to the lake and then you're here for six days of great fishing. Oh, there we go, we got a double header. Oh, and this one's a good one. Oh, man. <laughs> right on, well, I'm gonna <laughs> see if I can get this guy off here. Oh, that was just the best. It's just steady action, too. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, it's, it's just crazy out here. And that's what's fun about pike. Yeah. That's all top water. It's very visual kind of fishing. Oh man, it's just one after another, double headers. And I can tell how much fun you're having. You're really enjoying this. <laughs> oh yeah, as always. <laughs> pike is just a blast to come for. Oh, this one's a, this one's a nice one. Look at him going down there. Man. Good. Oh, that's better. That's a nice one. Nice Twins. size. Twins. Yeah, oh. 
<laughs> they are, they're twins. They are twins. Oh, you guys are being snacked on. Look at the top of his head. They call a lipper. A lipper. Lippers are good because you don't have to use the spreaders on them. Lippers are my favorite. Yeah. Because these, and you can see how big the fish is. These are real nice pike. Not one of the huge guys we're going to catch in here, but nice really one. Now, the nice thing about. Watch the eyes because he's going to come out and he's going to jump at him really fast. Right? Right. There. Oh, good one. <laughs> now, Lovely. that is the best thing, catch, <laughs> catching them like that. Oh. Then you don't have to use the spreaders, but in yours, it could we be a different need, story. We need the spreaders. So I'll leave my hook in here. And you know one thing about pike is don't, whenever you're trolling back and forth, like moving back in location, don't leave your fly in the water. I'm just warning people out there right now, all the viewers, don't leave your fly in the water because <laughs> that pike, you'll be trolling back at a half decent speed and those pike will just come. Oh, they'll go right oh, after it. Yeah. Right after it. Look at that guy. Being snacked on. Look at the top of his head right there. Yeah. Gee. And these pike are just voracious. Whoa, he's opened his mouth. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's I'd be quick why there. Whenever he opens it up, you see his gills expand. <laughs> he's looking for something to bite. Somebody to bite. There you go. And there he goes. Oh, he took mine. Oh, gee. Oh, 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 oh. oh, you know, this fly, big black, has caught a lot of fish, but not the big guy. Not big the, red has got the bigger fish. Yep. As you say, you got that 42 incher the other day, and you got the majority of big fish, only that big one earlier. But this big black, they love it. It they has really produced like it. very well. So, you know what we're going to do? So right after we release this fish, we're going to go to the bench and tie up Big Black. Well, there it is, here's the fly. This guy here has probably been the most productive, not for the bigger fish, but the most productive, and I think that's what everybody wants when they come up here. You bet Catch you. a whole bunch. Well, <laughs> you know what, that fly's probably caught now, what? 40 or 50 fish, that yeah. one fly. That one fly, and yeah. it's, still a, it's still alive, like it's still around, you know, it's still got a little hair on them. I mean, we fished these where there's just absolutely no hair left, and they still hit it. But again, the color's important. Real flat lighting, calm conditions, they like the black. I think the black's just starting to look good. So why don't we go to the bench and tie up big black. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to the bench. Well today we're going to tie up a big pike fly and it's called Big Head Black. And we also found with these patterns that they work really well in black or red. So make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. We're going to tie the Big Head Black on a Mustad 5 watt hook. We'll use some 3 aught black thread to tie with, some black monster hair for the tail, and some spun black deer hair for the body. First step in the fly is to tie in a base layer of thread and we'll just tie it right back to the bend in the hook. I've taken some black monster hair and I've taken about two inches. It's probably double the, the length of the hook. And we're just going to tie in it for the tail. And the thing with pike, you want a nice long tail on that. Now that the tail's tied in, we're going to take some deer hair and we're going to start spinning up the body. So wrapping our deer hair, pull nice and tight. Stack the hair back and continue all the way up the body, stacking and spinning until you reach the eyelid of the hook. Now that we've finished spinning up the body, we are going to whip finish our fly. Let's whip finish near the head. And what we'll do is remove the hook from the vise and start trimming the body to form the shape. So I'm going to start off by trimming the body and I'm going to trim the, the bottom of the fly fairly flat. I want this really nice and flat. And after I've got the bottom nice and flat, I'm going to go to the sides and we want this tapered to the back. So we want the thin part of the fly up near the eyelet. So we're going to trim it fairly close near the eyelet and then taper it so it's a nice bushy body towards the back. And just keep making it nice and round form a body, and again, leave the hairs on the back nice and long. 
And there it is, the finished big head black. You know, this is a great dry fly pattern. But when the fish aren't coming to the top, allow this fly to sink and fish it wet. That's a little bit bigger submarine down there. Yeah, not bad. Better? Oh, good scrap though. Good scrappy fish. <laughs> he doesn't want to come in. Look at this eight weight rod. It's just bent right over. You know, some of the things you should look for when you're out pike oh, fishing. Oh, big air. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But warm water is one. Like these fish are feeding in two feet of water. They're actually going to move in and they're, they're actually getting ready to spawn, which is why they've all come into the bay like this. But it's just taking a little water temperature heat to get this, the water temperature up to where the fish are starting to feed. The main lake out here right now is 46 degrees, which is why the fish have moved in here. It's nice and shallow and it actually heats up during the day. Now let's just try to show the proper way to release these big guys. <laughs> Without getting bit. Now a lot of guys will do that. They'll actually gill the fish. Not, it's not gilling, it's actually going underneath the gills where the mouth is. And that's a safe way to lift the fish up too, but we try to handle the fish as little as we can. Not because we, well, because we don't want to get bit. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Oh, without getting too much of a shower. Yeah. Oh, it's got so cute. Yeah, everybody can have a good look at this guy too. What I'll do is we'll try to get the hook out. Maybe I'll hold him up for everybody first. Okay. Before we do that. And if he wants to go, he's going to go. There he is there. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Right on. A big fish. Great big pike. But you can see that yap on him. That just mouth comes out wide. That's big. That's weighing some pounds. That's a, nice, that's a nice pike. He's just not at all interested in that. There, there you go. go. Now you're going to have to spread them yourself. Yeah, you got to pull them real hard. Okay, this is the dangerous part here. <laughs> that's why I got the spreaders. Yeah, in no kidding. <laughs> the needle nose. Trying to get down in there to get the fly. Took it quite deeply. He did. He wanted. There you go. Oh, boy. Rehooked. There we go. There he is. All right, there he goes. Whoa, and he wants to go. And there he goes, the big brute. Hey, not bad. I think we're a little timid. A teamwork thing. <laughs> <laughs> a little timid. Well, you know what? I got all ten fingers still. We are, yeah, we are, well, we're obviously more the trout fishermen. You know, we yeah. get an opportunity once a year to come up and do this kind of thing. I think we're experienced pike fishermen now. <laughs> well, the six days of fishing here, you catch an awful lot of pike. Well, look at our hands. We're not hacked. Well, I've seen a lot of guys up here, <laughs> and they are. Everybody's showing off their war wounds at the exactly. end of the day. Exactly. they got slices and everything. We're pretty unscathed, so that's teamwork. Keep... Mine's not bad. I'll, uh, oh. <laughs> and that's all you expect up here, double headers. Like you're going to get just steady double headers. It's crazy. Well, that's because there's only two of us fishing in the boat. If there was three, we'd have triple headers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't get the fly in without something oh. chasing it. Good thing about my guy, I think he's a lipper. And when you find, oh, that's not a bad one. I'm going to build a good scout. But when you come into these places, like Kluani, and you come to Wellesley Lake, you can actually look around in any bays you find that are shallow, you're gonna get fish. You're gonna have pike in here, you're gonna have white fish, you even have some lake trout. And there he goes. Right Just on, like on. that. So I'll assist you with this one. This guy was a lipper. Oh, is it a lipper? Yeah. Oh, he is a lipper, yeah. Okay. It's actually wrapped up, it looks like. I think yeah. we could unwrap him. I think he's actually shaking the hook. I think he's just wrapped up. I think one one roll, he's one roll, one roll away from being gone. Yeah. That's right, yeah, he's just, he's tried to take it there. Try to unwrap him, watch it, there, there it goes. It is. Isn't that a handy <laughs> way to go, wow. You betcha, right on. 
What a great place to come. I mean, oh, Brian man. has got just a phenomenal place here at Wellesley Lake. Well, so nice. You know, the lake is so big and you got the three great species to pick from. You know, the pike, the lake trout, lake whitefish, all a lot of fun to catch. You know what you got to do before you come here, though? Do some exercises because your arms are going to be sore by the end of the week. <laughs> Especially after pike. <laughs> pike are just the best. It's tough. And pike fishing is a lot of fun. We had a lot of, a lot of fun watching them today because it's so visual. Best yeah, part of it all. That is. And when the water warms up that way, you are going to get that good top water action. So look forward to it. It's a lot of fun. Big thanks to Brian for bringing us up here, for Terry for shooting it, for the rest of the guys for helping out around the cabin. Yeah. It's yeah. been really good. It's been, it's a, it really is a great place to come. Oh, it is. Yeah, for sure. One of the best. When you do, make sure you take care. And conserve the waters. So you got the real nice regulations on Wellesley now. And the fishing is phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. They know what they're doing here. <laughs> See you next time. When we take a sport fishing on the fly.